Good day, everyone. My name is Raid Al Hazmi. I'm the Chief Information Officer at the Saudi Ministry of National Adult Health Affairs. I'm also an Assistant Professor at the Health Informatics Department at King Saud and Abdulaziz University for Health Sciences. Here, I'll be talking about our artificial intelligence journey at the Saudi Ministry of National Adult Health Affairs, MNGHA. Our AI journey is part of our digital transformation program. Digital transformation, DX for short, changes organizations' processes set up on culture using technology in order to achieve the organization's strategic objectives. But there is a lot of technology that are available out there within the DX realm. There is, for example, wearable devices that organizations could use in order to capture a lot of information about the patient and, and then analyze the information and improve the uh, quality of care provided to those patients. There's also Bluetooth low energy beacons that healthcare organizations could deploy within their facilities in order to guide patients to the services in a more practical way and also to analyze the patient's experiences and improve the experiences in the future. There is also the health passport that many countries around the world are using to tackle the current pandemic and maybe the future pandemics. And there is artificial intelligence that has limitless potential in many healthcare applications. So which one of those technologies the healthcare organization would include within the digital transformation program. In our case, we are relying on our IT strategic framework to capture what we call problems or improvement opportunities, PIOs, which are basically either challenges the business departments and the business entities within MNJHA are facing, or basically these are improvements that could be implemented that could improve the quality of uh, business processes that we have or basically uh, enhancing uh, some of the uh, processes and streamlining them. Uh, over the years, uh, we have been analyzing the PIOs and we have found that many of them uh, are pointing to challenges that could be tackled with AI artificial intelligence. And that's why we have initiated our AI uh, program uh, in order for us to implement the framework uh, and then basically benefit from this technology. And from the beginning, we wanted this program to be holistic. Uh, and that's why we uh, included all of the elements that are necessary uh, for the AI uh, program to be successful. And this is not specific to AI uh, technologies. Uh, I mean, any other uh, uh, DX technology could benefit from this holistic kind of approach, which is the PPT. One of the most important elements of this PPT approach uh, is the people. And probably that's the most important element uh, in this uh, approach. With the people, uh, especially within the AI context, uh, you need the business entities within the organization, not only to engage in the process along the way, but to initiate the process and to come up with uh, initiatives that are based on technologies that either uh, will improve their business processes or they will overcome some of the issues that they are facing. You also want to uh, enlighten and uh, uh, provide some awareness to the people, mainly the business departments, when it comes to the new technologies that are available out there, including AI. Uh, and especially with AI, uh, 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 there is a lot of mysteries and uh, uh, the complexity of AI uh, requires that uh, uh, providing awareness to the business departments uh, is basically in place in order to achieve the goal of implementing a successful AI uh, strategy and in the end, a successful AI program. 
there is also unique technical skills that the organization has to instill within the organization. Uh, uh, AI requires special skills, uh, not basically uh, standard uh, IT uh, skills that uh, uh, many colleges and academic institutions uh, offer. Uh, so those skills and this uh, education uh, and training has to be provided for the technical team. And there are also, again, circling back to the business entities, there are a lot of misconceptions about AI. Uh, many uh, really overestimate uh, the, uh, the power of AI of automating the process from A to Z and coming up with a solution that is highly uh, accurate. Uh, and that's not the case. We have to be really realistic. Uh, so we could really uh, invest the effort and time along the way during the implementation process so the benefit of AI uh, would uh, reach the maximum level. The other uh, element of the strategy that we're relying on, or the other P basically, uh, is the process base. And uh, the process of implementing AI, and again, any other technology within the IT realm, uh, has to be uh, aligned with the organization's strategic objective. Uh, you don't want uh, those kind of technologies uh, to be misaligned with the organization's strategic objectives so uh, the uh, resources are not going to be utilized in an efficient uh, uh, manner. Uh, you want those uh, processes uh, that are based on AI, uh, basically business driven uh, and also business initiated. Uh, so uh, the adoption by the business will be at its highest level. AI requires a lot of data, and with this large amount of data, uh, there will be a lot of uh, challenges when it comes to uh, protecting the patient's privacy and the uh, data confidentiality. Uh, so strong data governance is also important uh, in this element, which is the process. And there is the requirement of having a high degree of digital maturity uh, that the organization has to reach in order for the organization to embark on AI projects. The third element, which probably is the easiest relatively, is the technology. Uh, AI requires a set of hardware, uh, clustered hardware with, with certain kind of specs that the organization has to allocate, and also software as well. Uh, AI requires uh, different kind of environments from uh, training the data uh, uh, to serving the data, uh, uh, as well as the, the initial stages of uh, acquiring the data and storing this large amount of data in a big data solution uh, and what comes afterward when it comes to uh, mashing up the data and wrangling the data and preparing the data uh, for the AI model uh, training. So all of these environments, uh, they're special for AI and they require special kind of software and IT platforms that uh, have to be uh, allocated for the AI uh, uh, solution to be uh, basically successful and beneficial in the end. In our case, uh, we have uh, utilized uh, the government-to-government -government, uh, partnership between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Republic of Korea uh, that was signed uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, and uh, we're so uh, thankful for our uh, uh, Korean partners, uh, the National IT uh, Promotion Agency, uh, SNUBH, uh, and uh, Easy Care Tech, and the other uh, companies uh, from the Great uh, Republic of Korea that engaged with us uh, in our AI journey and uh, are helping us uh, adopting AI in an accelerated uh, manner. And uh, uh, what we have done in order again to uh, work on the elements of our AI strategy is uh, basically holding a healthcare AI workshop uh, in October of 2019. And this is again working on, on the people uh, element uh, of the AI strategy by providing awareness about the benefits of AI what AI could uh, offer 
to the organization and also soliciting uh, uh, ideas uh, and initiatives from the business uh, that uh, tackle again either uh, a problem in their business processes uh, or, or basically enhance uh, the business processes that they have. And we came up with a lot of uh, initiatives uh, that the business entities that have basically suggested and we did encapsulate them in the uh, uh, AI uh, program uh, that we uh, launched with our uh, uh, Korean partners uh, uh, last year. And uh, this program involved uh, five uh, diseases. Uh, those five diseases are uh, Alzheimer's, uh, brain stroke, uh, colonoscopy, uh, coronary artery calcification, and epilepsy. And uh, the, the journey uh, has basically gone through all of the stages of, of uh, developing the AI uh, models, uh, uh, retraining them, and uh, checking the accuracy of the AI models, uh, and uh, making them ready for uh, deployment. When it comes to Alzheimer's uh, disease, uh, we were able to achieve uh, about 81% of accuracy. It's a little bit less uh, of what uh, was achieved in the Republic of Korea when this AI model was uh, first developed. And uh, we assume that this is because of the uh, difference in modalities uh, between what we use and what, uh, what, what had been used uh, uh, when the AI model was initially uh, 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 developed and trained. And this is a common uh, issue with, uh, with AI, what's called uh, uh, basically over-specifications, uh, where you train the AI models uh, on certain set of equipment, and then when you uh, apply the AI models uh, on data that came from different set of medical equipment or devices, you get a little bit different results, but with retraining the AI model, which we have done, uh, we have, were able to achieve a close accuracy in the end. Uh, the colonoscopy uh, uh, also uh, was one of the diseases that we worked on and we, and we achieved uh, a very good percentage of accuracy. Uh, again, uh, it's a collaborative effort uh, between uh, us and our Korean partners. Uh, we, were, we are so thankful uh, for their engagement uh, in this uh, process. And what the accuracy that we have achieved is around 85% area under the curve, which is acceptable uh, in, in AI. It's actually uh, on the high end when it comes to the accuracy. But again, during the uh, uh, retraining of those AI model on our data, we have uh, found a lot of false negatives uh, some of the tulips in the colonoscopy uh, were not uh, caught by the AI model. And that's, again, another common issue that you find in AI. It's called overfitting uh, that you, you would have uh, when you train the model on specific set of data, uh, and then you apply different data uh, on the model so you get different results. But we were able to overcome all of this. Uh, the coronary artery calcification, uh, the, uh, the third project that we worked on, we were able to achieve a very high uh, accuracy, which is above 90%. And uh, the benefit of this uh, exercise, uh, which is part of the G2G collaboration, is that we were also uh, able to uh, create our internal capacity of developing AI. Uh, so we did actually launch three AI projects internally. One of them is about the diabetic uh, retin retinopathy uh, screening, uh, uh, which is basically uh, an AI model that uh, analyzes all of the retinopathy images that come out of our screening program, which is a large amount of data our physicians cannot handle. And we wanted to have an AI layer between this large number of, of uh, images that come from the uh, primary healthcare clinics as part of the screening program and what goes to the, our reporting ophthalmologists in the end. Uh, another project which we launched is to tackle the uh, no-show rate and reduce the no-show rate by uh, detecting uh, and predicting uh, the no-show 
uh, appointments uh, from the beginning so patients would get more reminders uh, and then hopefully they will attend uh, uh, the, their appointments uh, at a higher rate. There are also a set of obstetrics uh, AI projects that we launched uh, as well. The challenges that we face are, are basically common challenges of AI. So one of them is the uh, acceptance by end users uh, of, uh, of those AI technologies. Uh, AI changes the business uh, processes at the clinical uh, uh, level or the clinical ground in a significant way. And uh, this change comes usually with a little bit of resistance, but that's part of the process. And uh, we are basically uh, working on this and tackling this. And we haven't seen a lot of uh, and, and significant amount of resistance, but it's something that we have faced as a challenge. And there are also other challenges related to uh, the handling of the data and labeling of the data and collection of the data as well uh, in, in the uh, process of the uh, retraining of the models. And also there is a challenge of how do you integrate those already trained AI models into your uh, uh, basically business processes uh, uh, in the field. Uh, that's, that's another challenge uh, that uh, we basically uh, have faced and we are overcoming uh, uh, nowadays. The lessons learned uh, is basically uh, uh, related to uh, compatibility with uh, the machines when it comes to uh, uh, the AI models that are already trained, uh, that uh, you acquire or you basically import into your environment. Uh, there is always the, the, uh, uh, the need to have the skill set that would be uh, able to uh, uh, reshape the format of the data that you have to uh, cope with the AI model, uh, so you could really customize the AI model uh, to your uh, needs. There is also the need to have a set of, of uh, uh, tools that are available uh, that would enable the adoption of uh, AI in an easy manner and also deployment of an AI, uh, of AI models in an easy manner. Uh, and there is also the gaps in the uh, clinical as well as the technical skills that organizations nowadays have to face and, and also overcome uh, AI again as a, as a, a, a cutting edge uh, new field uh, that uh, basically not many IT professionals are already trained on and also uh, the clinicians and practitioners uh, that are not aware of not many of them uh, so again, education, training, and awareness is key, uh, and that's what we learned uh, going through this process. The outcomes that uh, we are basically looking at is basically improving the quality of care uh, and also improving the patient safety to one of the top priorities uh, for many healthcare organizations, uh, and also uh, delivering uh, digital uh, uh, services uh, that would basically uh, improve the patient experience in the end by uh, processing the exams and processing the data in a fast manner so patients would get the services uh, at, at a faster kind of pace and in a, in a fast way with, with a very high accuracy at the end. Uh, that's all what, we, uh, uh, what I have and uh, thank you so much for listening.